Uh, moving Excellent. on to our next session here. It's uh, breaking the glass ceiling for technical writers. Well, I always thought we were saturated. We had no future. <laughs> Thank you, Mridila. Uh, a talk to elaborate various career paths for writers based on, let me just, yeah, based on the speaker's own experiences. Some will find inspiration to break the mold and try something different. Some may Absolutely. find a way to get out of a situation they find themselves stuck in, or maybe right. help someone to find a job for themselves. Yeah. Um, Rodhila is a senior tech writer with Salesforce, a single parent to a human and two feline kids. <laughs> that is, you are a superwoman already. <laughs> She's also a qualified art therapist. After having backed her first job as a developer in 1999, she has been shattering ceilings and molds ever since and creating her own pathways. Over to you, Rodhila. Thank you. Hello everyone, thank you so much for this opportunity to share my views and thoughts uh, with all of you and I hope somewhere it will inspire you to take that step to break your own glass ceilings, we all have our own ceilings. So um, the moment we hear the word ceiling, we think of uh, height. So how high is high? So uh, what is high for me may not be high for someone else. So we all have this, our own definition of heights. Now, um, to scale those heights, we can use stairs, we can use ladders, we can use an elevator. So those who are not privileged, they are using ladders and their determination, and it may take more time for them to scale the height. Some who already have, uh, you know, some amount of leverage, they may take the elevator and scale the height much faster. So um, today in this session, I just want to um, share this that every one of us, whether it be in personal or professional life, at some point of time, whether we are using a ladder or elevator does not matter, we face a glass ceiling. So how I got this entire concept to present when Raj Kavita uh, approached me, uh, or rather she approached all of us to present here is that the moment I entered Salesforce, a very experienced uh, colleague of mine said, oh, we writers, we have concrete ceilings, not even glass ceilings. So that's when I thought, no, um, you know, there are avenues, we just need to do our research and see how we can progress and break those. Okay, so talking about barriers at workplace and barriers in our mind. So barriers at workplace are easier to break and in our mind, uh, that takes a little more inner engineering, as Sadhguru says, we need to work on ourselves to break our um, barriers in the mind. So let us first consider the barriers at workplace. It could be in the form of restricted responsibilities. So there could be a scenario where the manager thinks uh, that, uh, you know, X, Y, Z can only uh, be given this specific type of task. And I cannot take risk by giving uh, that person the responsibility of some additional task. And uh, in today's session, usually glass ceiling is very much, uh, you know, used with respect to women. But when it comes to tech writers, it is gender neutral. That's why in today's uh, session also, I have consciously made sure that it is gender neutral. And I'm talking for everyone irrespective of the gender. So this is the responsibility part. And then there could be a restriction with respect to vertical growth. And in vertical growth, it could be like, whenever you are at an appraisal table and you are presenting what all you do, did and your um, manager tells you, you know what, all this is great, but I think you're still not ready to, you know, bag that title of a lead or a manager. Um, so what do you do there? And it could also be no lateral growth. So it is not that everyone looks for vertical growth. For example, I will be much more happier if I am given a lateral growth where uh, the work is more challenging and I 
get to mentor others. So not everyone um, looks at vertical growth. So there are two types of growth that we can always look at. One is vertical and one is lateral. Those who love managing people, they will go for vertical growth. And those who love being in the technical sphere, you know, gaining more knowledge, they will uh, kind of, uh, you know, break the break out of the shell and go for the lateral growth. And uh, what kind of things can be barriers in our mind? Self-doubt. And I myself am victim, not victim, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I myself have a lot of self-doubt, you know. Um, so there was, uh, there is this um, community of writers who have been asking me to take a session for them. And I just could not come up with a topic because I just feel I'm not good enough at anything, you know. And that is a combination of self-imposter syndrome also, because everyone at work is telling, oh, you're doing a fabulous job, but you feel really I don't think I'm yet there. I think XYZ is much better than me. So these are all ceilings, you know, these are the things we need to shatter. And this is something I tell myself also that uh, no Mridula, these are the barriers of your mind and you need to find ways to shatter these. Then there are personal barriers. I'm not going to get into the personal barriers in this session. Let us stick to the professional barriers and uh, what we are going to go about, do about it. So when it comes to vertical growth and lateral growth, I think clear communication is you know, inevitable. We have to be very clear in our uh, spoken, uh, in, I won't say English, but language, you know. So we have to be very, very clear in our, uh, when we are speaking, communicating with our manager, be it in words or by email. Uh, we have to be very clear. So we have to do a lot of homework there, research and do a lot of self analysis. What are our strengths? What are our weakness? What are our areas of improvement? Remember, it really blows the manager's mind when they see that you are totally aware of what are your own areas of improvement. So that see, makes them believe that yes, this person has clarity of thoughts. When it comes to lateral growth, uh, if there are no lateral growth, just uh, get into the uh, you know internal job openings. See, approach the managers directly. I have always looked for lateral growth, and I ex explore different kinds of roles at Oracle. And when I would apply for a job, I will directly look at the hiring manager and I will, um, you know, approach that manager directly and very, um, I, I do very clear communication, no fluff, nothing. I tell these are my things that I have, I'm experienced in. And do you think I will be, um, you know, uh, do you think you can consider me for this role? Either they will say yes or they will say no. You know, you are not going to get punished for asking out um, this particular question to anyone. So these are some of the things and ways we really have to get over our inhibitants. You know, that is that inhibition is uh, something that really holds us back, I would say 80 to 90% of the time, you know, fear of failure. These are the things and fear of failure comes even when we are trying to ask, even when we are trying to ask our manager for that hike, for that promotion. The fear of failure is also fear of rejection. So these are all, uh, you know, kind of barriers in our mind. And, uh, you know, uh, you can see it as barriers at workplace sometimes as they say, you don't leave your company, you love your company, but the team is just not working for you. The manager has different priorities, you, it doesn't align with yours start looking out. Don't let the quality of your work, you know, go down. The moment you feel that, you know, I am, I am totally, you know, down on Mondays. I, oh my God, this Monday blues is killing me. That is your signal to look for better opportunities. And there is no harm in that. Uh, you 
your mind, your body will start giving you signals that it is time to move on. And you should hear that. And don't be impulsive when you're changing the job. Be very calculative. Do your research on the companies that you want to join. Give the interviews and see what are what is the culture, how the interviewer is uh, behaving with you, how is the HR. Do a very calculated uh, move when you're switching jobs. So this is one way to overcome barriers at workplace to look for growth. And growth could be in terms of finance, in terms of knowledge, um, in terms of personal growth. So um, how is the workspace changing for writers? Now, um, I have about 25 years of experience in various fields, not only uh, to tech writing. Now, uh, when I was a developer and I was writing, there were no tech writers in, with whom we were discussing our projects. But that scenario has changed. I have worked with Oracle and now I'm working with Salesforce. I'm in my notice period. I'm going to um, join a great uh, DevOps company called Copado. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is that we all are into Agile. You know, and in Agile, we all work together. So it is no longer that scenario, at least not in the bigger organization or any organization that follows Agile. In case your team is not following Agile, it is time to talk to your manager and see how Agile can be implemented. I'll tell you why. Because in Agile, the way we work is that in each and every scrum calls in sprints, we will have different departments coming together on the same call. It will include the writers, testers, product managers, and of course, the development team. So it is a very, very collaborative atmosphere now, and writers must leverage that. How can the writers leverage that? Look at the opportunities. You are interacting with developers, testers, product managers, and there are the opportunities right in front of you. So if technical roles, see, always remember, we writers are, have superpowers because we get this bird's eye view of the entire product. Look at the developers. They are only developing their own thing, their own part. You know, they're restricted to a particular part. Look at the product manager. They are, uh, you know, dealing with one product. Look at the testers. Again, a specific area of the product. But we writers have a bird's eye view of the entire thing. So the kind of knowledge, if we are open to receiving knowledge, if we are open to gaining much more knowledge by equipping ourselves with good um, you know, courses and um, good webinars. The WDD webinar Australia was amazing. What we can do is that we can channelize our ambitions, our aspirations, and see if we want to continue where we are there is nothing wrong in being where you are. And if you want to continue, explore other areas, here are your options. You can become a product manager. Now go ahead and see which all courses will allow you to do that. Uh, if you, that would be like a techno-functional role for product managers and for functional roles, it could be you are a user documentation, you can explore dev development documentation. So, sorry, developer documentation. Now, what all things are required for developer documentation? Talk to the managers, talk to mentors, talk to the engineers, find out your path. What knowledge? I have always believed the best tool to break the ceiling is always knowledge. At least I, I come from a very modest background. My parents did not have uh, money to send me to engineering college. I started my career as a front desk uh, executive at a coaching center. Like um, it was not normal coaching center. It was a uh, like computer center. So I would pick up the books of the faculties after the classes are over and I would just, you know, equip myself with the knowledge to shatter that ceiling after which I can go to the next one. So, um, so these are some of the roles that we can look at product manager, testers, uh, you know, you just don't have to think that I'm a writer, I cannot do that. That is something we always have to overcome. 
there are plenty of roles for writers. Now, um, talking about my journey, as I said, my first job was like a front desk uh, executive. But then I realized, and this is something my mother, who was not very educated, but she was very sharp in her knowledge of, uh, you know, how to be progressive in life. So she always used to tell me that you need to equip yourself with knowledge. Knowledge is the sharpest tool with which you can shatter not only the glass ceiling, the concrete ceiling, the steel ceiling. I don't care what, what is the material, but knowledge can be really, really the sharp tool with which you can shatter these. So if you look at my journey at every stage, I upskilled myself to shatter that particular glass ceiling. Now, having come here at Salesforce, now I'm moving to a startup that is also, uh, you know, uh, I'm going into a growth zone because in bigger organizations, especially when you have spent 10, 15, 20 years at bigger organization, you will see that the growth is very slow. Okay. Initially, it might be very fast for younger uh, people, but for, as you become more experienced, it becomes much more slow. So what do you do? Bigger organizations are far more comfortable than, uh, you know, it's like a hammock for experienced people. But I said, no, I don't want, a hammock does not mean growth. I have to shed my shell, come out of this shell and get into the discomfort zone and grow. So from the hammock, I jumped onto a treadmill called Velocity and the Velocity got acquired by a bigger company, Salesforce. So then I thought, no, I don't want to go back to the hammock. Let me get into a smaller company where I know that I can mentor people. I can, uh, you know, share my knowledge. I can recruit people, build my team. There's so much to do. So I hope that I was able to, um, you know, share uh, some of my experiences and how I shattered my professional glass ceilings at different phases of my life. So if you um, want to connect with me, please feel free to send me a connection request in the LinkedIn. My name is Mridula Menon, and uh, I would love to talk to you. Thank you. Awesome, Adela. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all your wonderful experiences and how you've been breaking the scene. My pleasure. And um, it, it certainly, I'm definitely sure all the younger lot in our WTT India channel are looking for such nuggets of information. Please do write a blog post about this, which would help the younger generation to explore more about it and share it on a WTT India channel because kids are looking for, uh, you know, uh, experienced folks like you to guide them, to mentor them. And this is something that will take them a long way in their career. Thank you once again, Rudala. Thank you.